All right, so let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Pastor Sean Moore has pastored Faith Christian Center in Phoenix, Arizona since 2004. It is a striving or thriving diverse congregation in that metropolitan Phoenix area. Uh, he's also married to Pastor Erica Moore, and they have four beautiful children together. He's also founded Band Camp, and I'll allow him to tell you some more things about what it is that God has used him to do. But we know in the scripture, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, Angelus, pastors and teachers and so today we have a pastor teacher gift uh, in our midst and their job is to perfect edify build up the saints so that the saints can go out and do the work of the ministry and the Bible tells us is that that's what will grow uh, the body of Christ and so God has sent a wonderful ministry gift uh, to us today in the person of pastor Sean Moore so linked up church can you put your hands together and give God thanks for the ministry gift of Pastor Sean Moore. Come on, you all can do better than that. Let's thank God for him. Have fun. Have fun. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. Great to see you out in the house of God here at Linked Up Church today. Uh, if you uh, came to hear Pastor Gregory, we want to uh, invite you to come back on next Sunday. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, today you've got to deal uh, with light skin leadership today. But uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, I haven't uh, been here in a few years, but uh, every time I come back here to Linked Up Church, it's always uh, a blessing to be here in your midst. Uh, I love, obviously, on today getting a chance to just honor um, uh, men, uh, honor particularly dads. I, I want we, we honor the legacy of the fathers who have uh, gone home uh, to be with the Lord. We honor uh, the fathers who are still here today. Amen. Uh, and, but we also give double honor to, uh, to the father of all fathers. Ephesians chapter 3. I love this. Ephesians chapter 3 says he's the father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. He's the leader of the largest adoption agency of all time. He's a master at taking his enemies and converting them into his spiritual children. Amen. There is no other father like him in the universe. He is in a league all by his, he is in a league of his own. He's in a category all by himself, and he deserves everything that we can give to him on today. How many of y'all appreciate the father of all fathers? There's only one word that we could use to describe the type of father he is, and that's heavenly. Amen. Don't you love him with all of your heart? And 28 years in, and I still love him with all my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, and with all of my strength. And worship becomes personal because of the love that we have in our hearts towards our Father. Amen? I want to uh, take a moment just to give honor where honor is due. Uh, pastor Gregory used to be my youth pastor uh, back in the day. Man. Got saved, came into the things of God. I uh, saw an example in a, in a man of God who uh, challenged me to want to be a better version of myself and uh, has challenged me in every way. You don't realize when you're single some of the teaching that you sit up under that really prepares you for marriage and family later on. Uh, and I, I'm really big on encouraging men. Listen, marriage and family is a great place for men to develop. Uh, you know, as, as, as men, um, a, a, the term husband is a... Uh, is a farming term, and it means cultivator. A lot of men pride themselves on their sowing ability, but the greatest gift that you've been given is the ability to cultivate the ground around you. Amen. And uh, I, I learned from uh, Pastor Gregory about how to live and, and how to honor God in my body. And so my wife and I, we, uh, we did, we, the first time we kissed was when we walked down the aisle. And you didn't realize that that stuff prepares you and gets you ready so you can stay faithful to one person for the rest of your life. Amen. So I will always be grateful to him and uh, to Pastor Trish for uh, just the impact that your example and your life has made upon me. My family is still benefiting today from a sacrifice and a commitment that you made almost 30 years ago. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate you. Well, I trust you came ready for the word today. You came ready for the word? Amen. That's about 27 of you. I said, did you come ready for the word today? All right, come on, linked up church. Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We bless you today. We thank you for the honor and privilege of being able to come boldly to your throne that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And God, as we come, we come in faith. We come trusting and believing that both your grace and your mercy has been made available for us. I trust, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through these lips of clay your word with power, with revelation, with understanding, with accuracy, in a way that your people can get it, grab a hold of it, and make it their own. I pray that you'll make me like a fly on the wall today. Let me speak with specifics and details that translate send my human comprehension but speak specifically into the hearts and the lives of those that are here those that are connected with us today i give you thanks and i give you praise for every life that will be impacted and changed and transformed for your glory in jesus name and everybody in agreement today say it amen, amen. before you take your seats why don't you tell your neighbor this is your blessed day you get to sit next to me today Well, we're going to start today in uh, Mark chapter 9, so I encourage you to go over to uh, Mark chapter 9. Of course, I'm sure that the scriptures will come up on the screens. Uh, You can follow along whichever uh, whichever, uh, Bible, if you have a physical Bible with you, an electronic Bible. I believe the notes are in the YouVersion Bible app if you're interested in getting them there. Uh, Whether you're a father or not uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, You can still get something out of the message today. Uh, I think that a huge mistake that we make uh, today as believers is when we only store in our hearts the word that we think we need for right now. Amen. One of the promises of God in John chapter 14, verse 26, is that the Holy Spirit will bring everything back to your remembrance whatsoever has been committed unto you. Listen, God might move in the midnight hour, but God doesn't wait till the midnight hour to get to us what it is that we need. There are going to be some words you're going to, you're going to get on the inside of your heart that you're going to carry around for a few years before you will ever get from that word what you need to give you direction and to give you the power that you need to deal with some things that are going on in your life. So I've learned uh, as a believer that I check in during every message. Uh, whether I think I, I think I need it right now or not, because I'm going to store it in the shelves of my heart and Holy Spirit's going to pull it when I need it the most. So in Mark chapter 9, we're going to begin reading at verse number 17. We're going to read down through verse 29. I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. And it says, one of the throng replied to him, teacher, uh, I brought my son to you for he has a dumb spirit. And wherever it lays hold of him so as to make him its own, it dashes him down and convulses him and foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and he falls into a motionless stupor and is wasting away. And I asked your disciples to drive it out and they were not able to do it. He answered them, oh, unbelieving generation without any faith, how long shall I have to do with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. So they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him at once, it completely convulsed the boy. He fell to the ground, kept rolling about, foaming at the mouth, and Jesus asked his father, how long has he had this? And he answered, from the time that he was a little boy, and has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything... Do have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, (laughs) you say to me if I could do anything. Why, all things can and are possible to him who believes. At once the father of the boy gave an eager, piercing, inarticulate cry with tears and said, Lord, I believe constantly help my weakness of faith. But when Jesus noticed that a crowd of people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and dumb spirit, I charge you to come out of him and never go into him again. And after giving a hoarse, clamoring, fear-stricken shriek of anguish and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy lay pale and motionless like a corpse so that many of them said he's dead but Jesus took a strong grip of his hand began lifting him up and he stood and when he had gone indoors his disciples asked him privately why could we not drive it out and he replied to them this kind this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting so if I were to uh, to give a title to today's message uh, it is the heart of a father the heart of a father. Now, the Bible isn't just filled with principles. Uh, it is also filled with stories. And one of the things that I appreciate about the Bible is that God did not just include uh, the highlights in the Bible, but we find in the Bible both the good, the bad, and also the ugly. And I think the Lord did this because it's more relatable to our human experience. Thank God for stories. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, it tells us that a good man or a good woman leaves an inheritance to his children's children. 
children. We, so when we talk about leaving an inheritance, we're talking about a legacy, something that's transmitted, something that's passed down to the next generation. And how many of y'all know as parents, our kids don't just need our stuff, they also need our stories. Amen. Thank God that we believe our God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. But they don't want to just hear that preach. They want to get to a place where we can share stories with them where our God did supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I mean, you know, when we get a glimpse into someone else's life, it oftentimes helps us to be able to see ourselves. Because I know that many times you might think that your situation is very unique and nobody's going through what it is that you're going through. But I mean, you know, the Bible tells us there is nothing new under the sun. There is no temptation that has taken us, but such as is common to man. Oftentimes what we're facing may be new to us, but it's not unique to everybody else. Somebody else has gone through it. Someone else has overcome it. They got the t-shirt, they got the video, and now their testimony can become your prophecy that you're going to come out on the other side as well. Now, when we're talking about the heart of a father, this, what we read here in Mark chapter 9, this story took place after Jesus came back down off the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he could see that the religious leaders were arguing with his disciples. And so in verse 16, he asked them, what are you arguing about? And when he poses this question, he asked it to the religious leaders, but actually someone from amongst the crowd spoke up. And it was a father whose son suffered with, from epilepsy ever since he was a little boy. So he had a brain disorder, and as a result of this brain disorder, uh, he had recurring seizures that he had been dealing with, and the condition had gotten so bad that the father said, my son is literally wasting away. This young man's father played a very key role in his son receiving his healing. And how many of you know our kids' struggles oftentimes are not just eye-opening experiences for them, they also can become locators for us. This dad didn't have epilepsy, but his son's fight with epilepsy helped this father to see his struggle with his own personal faith. And there are three things that I want to point out from this story that our children need from us as dads. Now, again, I'm going to speak to fathers today during the message, but ladies, come on, you're going to get something out of this as well because the Word of God is pregnant with revelation. The Word of God is going to, is going to speak to you today. It's going to bear witness with you today. And Holy Spirit is going to take a message that's directed towards a group, and, and the splatter is going to hit everybody in the room so that everybody feels like I got what I needed today. So the first thing that our kids need from us that I want to point out from this story is our children need dad's discernment too. Our children need dad's discernment too. Now, we don't know where this young man's mother was. We don't know if this was a single dad. We don't know if his wife wasn't able to come. We don't know if she was at home with the kids. We don't know if maybe she was taking care of some, uh, her, some, her elderly uh, parents. We don't know what was going on with the mom in this situation. Of course, back in Bible days, the man was the breadwinner for the family. And from reading this story and also from reading other accounts, what it gives me the impression is that this took place sometime during the day. So that means that this man must have taken some time over away from work in order to help his son get the breakthrough that he needed in his personal situation. And it's great when we see dads who are willing to sacrifice natural things to demonstrate to their children how important their spiritual well-being is. And I think that our children need to see not just their moms, but also their dads make sacrifices in these areas. I mean, you know, it's great for you to leave work, to get to the games, to get to the recitals, to get to all the school functions. But the kids also need to see dad is willing to not go golfing on Saturday in order to be here for Saturday prayer. Oh, I, I didn't get any amens. Look, I'm, I'm going to do your pastor. <laughs> this young man had a serious physical condition. Yet the father had enough discernment to recognize that his son's battle was spiritual in nature. Thank God for dads who know how to use their tools in order to fix things. But also thank God for dads who know when it's time to pull out the armor of God and go to battle spiritually on behalf of their family. See, what this young man was dealing with was not just a physical issue, it was demonic, which tells us that another trip to the doctor's office was not going to resolve the problem. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, I want you to look at this. It says, but the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly, meaningless, nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned, estimated, and appreciated. Now, in order to, to, uh, in order to grab a hold of what Paul is saying here in this passage, you have to first of all understand he is actually speaking to the church. He's not speaking to a group of lost people. He's speaking to a group of people who have come into the knowledge of the truth. And what he tells us here in the passage is that the, the, the non-spiritual man does not receive, notice three things, the gifts, the teachings... And the revelations of the Holy Spirit. Well, why does the natural, non-spiritual man struggle receiving these three things? It tells us because to the natural man, they are meaningless. They are nonsense unto him. And I know that a lot of times, especially as men, we, we pride ourselves at being very practical, you know, which I think is necessary. You, you know, we, we are receiving spiritual principles. We need to find out how they apply to our lives in the natural. We talked to the brothers about that on yesterday. But I want, I want you to see that if, if we're just natural and practical and even as, as heads of our home, we're okay with our wives being spiritual. We're okay with our wives going before the Father in prayer. We're okay with our wives seeking the face of God about what we're supposed to do as a family. And we just say, well, you know, I just provide and, you know, and, 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 you know I, I make sure things are taken care of in the natural. She needs a new washing machine. I make sure that washing machine is purchased. I mean, if there's something my family needs in the natural, I'm there as a man. And listen, that's great that you do those things in the natural, but you can't just be a natural man and lead a woman of God. A woman of God does not want to take the lead in her home. If she takes the lead spiritually, it's only because she feels like if I don't do it, he's not going to do it. Woo. See, as men, we pride ourselves at being problem solvers, but listen... If the, the enemy knows if the only weapons and solutions we have in our arsenal are natural and fleshly, then he's going to keep the battle over in the spiritual realm. Because he knows that man won't step out of the natural into the spirit to deal with the root issue of what is really going on. And I mean, you know, we want to be natural dads that can do what we need to do in the natural when it needs to be done. But we also want to be spiritual dads. So if we need to go to war, if we need to break out the word of God, if we need to get our degree in theology and take our family before the throne of God, if we need a word for the new year, if we need direction on where our family is supposed to go, we know how to switch back and forth between both worlds and get the downloads that we need to get from the Holy Spirit so that our family can get what they need from God. Come on, anybody in agreement with that today? Not just spiritual, not just natural, but supernatural dads are what our children need. Number two, our children need to see our willingness to yield to authority. Woo, woo. He said, nah, I ain't no light-skinned leadership now. It's Going to be talking about all this on Father's Day today. Come on, stay with me today. Our children need to see our willingness to yield to authority. So everybody in the home is yielded to dad, but who is dad yielded to? See, oftentimes we learn from our fathers how to relate to those that are in authority. And people who struggle to relate to authority figures oftentimes have unresolved daddy issues from the past that they have not overcome. And what I want you to see in the story that we just read is that this young man's miracle is directly connected to his father's ability to yield to someone in spiritual authority. Just imagine if this young man's father had unresolved daddy issues and had a problem relating to people in authority. Let me show you where the struggle would have gotten real for this dad. Right here in Mark chapter 9, verse 22 and 23, it says, And as often, you know, this spirit has thrown him both into the fire and into the water intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, you, <laughs> you say to me, if, if you can do anything, come on. Why all things can be and are possible to him that believes. See, he could have gotten his feelings right there and said, man, who, who, why you got to talk to me like that? 
You know how what I'm going through, you know what kind of challenges I'm dealing with. This is not the time for you to get smart with me. Come on, you strap on your sandals the same way I strap on my sandals. You tuning your tunic the same way I'm tuning my tunic. But there are miracles that God wants to release in our lives that are directly connected to our ability to relate to and connect with those who are in authority. How oftentimes do we make things complicated in the kingdom because we're trying to find our own way? We're trying to prove that we can do it. I don't know if we want people to give us the praise and give us the glory for what we figured out in this life. But listen, Paul said, whatever you have received, whatever you have learned, whatever you have seen in me do, and the God of peace will be with you. How can you make that kind of guarantee, Paul? How can you guarantee that if I follow after your example, the God of peace will be with me as well? Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sure, you, you, you are unique. Sure, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Sure, there is no one else on the earth like you. But listen to me. God isn't making up the rules as he goes. The reason why he gave us the word is so that we could have a historical account of how he has dealt with human beings in the past so that we could point out what is God and what is not. It's the reason why he gave us the fruit of the spirit. So we don't have to try to figure out exactly everything the spirit is doing. Let's just follow the fruit. And that is he's about love. He's about joy. He's about peace. He's about long suffering. He's about goodness. If the character of God is not connected to the method of God, then I don't know that God is in it. I want you to think about in Matthew chapter 8, there's a story about a centurion who has a, a servant that's at home who's, man, dealing with some physical challenges. And he comes to Jesus and he says to Jesus, I want you to come and heal my servant. And Jesus said, I'm on my way. I'm coming right now. He said, he said hold on. He said, you don't even have to come under my roof. Just speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. He said, listen, I'm a man in authority. When I tell somebody to come, they come. When I tell somebody to do this, they do it. He said, when I tell someone to go, they go. So because I understand authority, I believe that you are supreme in authority over my servant situation. So if you tell this sickness to go, it's leaving. If you tell healing to come, healing is coming to my servant right now. If you tell somebody to do something, they're going to do it because you're Lord and you're master. And I understand the way that authority works. And sometimes people in authority see things that we don't see. Listen to me. This, this father's son had been dealing with these epileptic seizures for years, ever since he was a little boy. And I'm sure as a dad, he tried everything that he could to try to help his son get free from his condition that he had been dealing with. He brings his son to the disciples. The disciples can't figure out. But he brings them to Jesus, and Jesus immediately knew what the answer was. And see, thank God for dads who know when they have come to an end of what they can do. Jesus knew right away this was a faith issue. Now, if I had a lot of time, I would, I would get into it, but I'll just give you just a little snippet. You can see that, that faith was the problem here because when Jesus showed up, the, the, the demon immediately started convulsing started acting out, never said anything, just started acting out. Why? Because they wanted them to focus on what it looked like instead of what they believed. It was a faith issue. He knew it immediately. And instead of addressing the spirit, he instead turns to the father and gets some history. How long have you been dealing with this? You know, is this, you know, has this been in your family? Is this something that you've been struggling, struggling with for some time? Because oftentimes when the enemy attacks us, he's going to always assume that this generation is going to struggle with the thing that the last generation struggled with. So he's going to the dad to get the details of what's going on because he's going to address this issue head on and his son is going to walk away free. This leads me into my third and final point today, and that is our children need to see their dads reach out for help when we need it. Woo, come on, somebody. Our children need to see their dads reach out for help when we need it. Man, I know oftentimes our kids see us like superheroes, man. How many... Dads in here have heard their kids say things like, man, my dad can do anything. Now, we know that ain't true, but it sure feels good to hear them say it, doesn't it? 
But listen, even super dads don't have all of the answers. And I can only imagine how helpless this father must have felt to watch his son go through this for years. Watching, and it's almost like watching your kids getting bullied and getting beat up every day. They come home with scratches and bruises and you want to show up at the school. You ready to fight just about anybody and you realize that they're battling against an enemy that you can't see with your physical eyes. And now you know there's nothing in the natural that you can do to free your son. You need a spiritual solution to the problem. And that's why he said, Lord, I have faith, but help my unbelief. Because my unbelief is the reason why I haven't been able to help my son. And listen, sometimes we see our kids dealing with natural things. And it's giving us a glimpse into what's going on in our life. When we're starting to see that, man, if I was just closer to God, if I was just spending time in prayer, if I was in my word like I need to be, I'd be able to help my child in this area but I've tried every natural practical thing that I can think of and it seems like nothing is working what is the key and I'm gonna tell you Holy Spirit wants to give you the keys nobody is more better equipped or better suited to address the issues going on in the lives of your children than you that's why God gave them to you There's a wisdom, there's a grace, there's an anointing, there's a discernment that you have that you will not find anywhere else. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes as parents, because parenting is one of the most humbling things in the world that that, uh, we can do. How many of y'all would agree here today? Hold on, let's take a minute. Let's rest in that for a second. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Parenting is one of the most humbling things. Boy, I tell you, then your kids get older and their opinion grows with their bodies. How long you been here? 15 years? Okay. Think you got life figured out, huh? Okay. All right. (laughs) Our children need to see, man, their dads reach out for help when we need it. Half the battle sometimes is just acknowledging where you're at. This dad refused to give up on his son's condition, and he could have easily called something temporary terminal. And I don't know where, what you're dealing with today or what you're going through with your kids or grandkids, but the enemy would love for you to see a phase, would love for you to see a moment in your child's life as something that's terminal that will never change. Listen, you might not have the answer to your prayer, but what you do have is prayer. You might not have an answer, but you still got prayer. See, we think prayer only works if I'm getting results. Man, listen to me. The Bible says in the presence of God, there are fullness of joy. there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. This is the confidence that we have in him that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Even if God doesn't answer my prayer, one moment in the presence of God does may not change my situation, but it changes me. Somebody say amen to that today. Our children need to see their dads reach out for help when we need it. Now, in Mark chapter 9, you'll see that this father's response when Jesus said all things are possible to him that believes. In verse 24, the father of the boy gave this eager, piercing, inarticulate cry with tears. And he said, Lord, I believe constantly help my weakness of faith. Now, I've been leading men's or what we call man camp in Phoenix. Been doing that for quite a few years now. And this is not exactly what I would call your typical everyday male response. (laughs) Eager, piercing, inarticulate cry with tears. Yeah, most men not respond in that way. What this tells me is that these are stuffed emotions. A lot of men are stuffers. Oftentimes, as men, we stuff our frustrations, we stuff our feelings, we stuff our anger, and what happens is that it ends up popping out in one moment of time, just like it did with this father. And I'm asking myself, who was this dad talking to about his situation, or was he talking to anybody at all? Maybe, just maybe, it hurt too much to talk about it. Maybe as a dad, he was too embarrassed to talk to other people about what his son was going through. I mean, I want you to just imagine every time your son has an episode having to explain to everybody, yeah, my son has a demon. I mean, who wants to do that every single time? Come on, somebody. Being honest, sometimes as parents, it's embarrassing to see our children go through some of the things that we go through. And although their issue is not our issue, that sometimes is the problem we're working through as parents. I can't even help you because I'm too embarrassed about your situation. Maybe as a dad, there are some things that you've been stuffing. 
Maybe there's some things that you've been frustrated about, angry about, but too embarrassed to talk about. And Proverbs chapter 17 and 17 says that a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. The reason why we have relationships, the reason why you go to a church called Linked Up is because you weren't designed to do life all by yourself. And when you feel overwhelmed and you feel like, man, I can't handle this situation or this. I'm too embarrassed by what's going on. You've got to be able to talk to somebody about what's going on so that you can get un- from out under the heaviness of what you're facing and dealing with. In Ecclesiastes, it tells us two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person fails, the other can reach out and help. But man, someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Why? Because you got to be on your game every single day. Listen, likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. See, pride is what prevents us from reaching out. Pride is what prevents us from letting an Aaron and a her hold up our arms. Pride doesn't come before a victory, gentlemen. Pride comes before a fall. Who's praying for you, man of God? Who's helping you shoulder the load of what you're carrying? You got Joshua like faith, but where's your Caleb? You got Moses like vision, but where's your Aaron? You got Elijah like anointing, but where is your Elisha? Amen. Our children need to see their dads reach out for help when we need it. I'm coming down the home stretch here. Mark chapter 9, verse 25. I want to point out something to you here in this passage. It says, but when Jesus noticed that a crowd of people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and dumb spirit, I charge you to come out of him and never go into him again. Now, let's break this down a little bit. What they are dealing with, the King James, uh, the Amplified here calls it unclean. The King James calls it foul, meaning it is an unclean, impure, and lewd spirit. So there's some, some type of, or we could assume there's some type of sexual uh, Uh, immoral immoral situation connected to what's going on with this young man. And what I would dare to say is this young man was exposed to something when he was a little boy and, and what it did was it opened up something demonic in his life and it manifested as epilepsy. Jesus calls it a deaf and dumb spirit, but it doesn't have anything to do with intelligence. Whatever this young man was exposed to, he has not been able to talk about. And because he hasn't been able to talk about it, the demon maintains control through the boy's silence. Notice even when the demonic spirit would manifest, it would just act out. It would convulse, he would foam at the mouth, but it would never say anything. See, the enemy attacks kids with adult issues that they don't always have the vocabulary to articulate what they're going through. And so we look at our child as a parent, and it's like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Tell me what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Why don't they always have the ability to communicate it? And sometimes the reason is because the enemy's power in that area of their life lies in their silence. And how often are we dealing with things in our lives? And this, and there are some people in here today, you are carrying around family secrets that, and you know, especially people that look like us, we, we, it's just things you don't talk about in the family. It's happened with grandma, it's happened with grandpa, it's happened with un- uncles, aunties, and we just don't talk about it. And then we wonder why in our generation we're struggling to get free from some things that we've seen consistently manifest in our families. And what's happening is that the enemy has used silence in order to maintain control over this struggle in the family. And until somebody decides to give voice to what's going on, amen, then freedom will be waiting 
on you to have enough courage just to speak up and say something about what you're going through. And listen, sometimes even as dads, we've been stuffing all of these things that we're feeling. And God is like, man, son, you don't have to go through this by yourself. I'm not expecting you to be God to your family. I'm not expecting you to shoulder the load that I'm supposed to carry. I told you to cast all of your care upon me because I care for you. When I made you and created you, I didn't make you to try to walk this life out by yourself. I made you so that I could walk alongside you, coach you, direct your step, let you know when you were on, let you know when you were off, give you the wisdom that you needed at times when you needed it the most. And listen, instead of coming to God to get the downloads we need, instead, we're just suffering in silence. And listen, if you are in here today, if you're in this room, male or female, And this really hits home with you. This really hits home. You're like, yeah, there are things that that I've been dealing with, that I've been going through, whether it's with your kids, grandkids, things that you've seen in your family. And the reason why the enemy has been able to maintain control is simply because no one's willing to give voice to it because I don't want to talk about what's happening in the dark. If I'm speaking to you today, while the musicians start to play a little bit here. If I'm speaking to you today, I'm going to invite everybody to stand to their feet. But if I'm speaking to you today, I believe God sent me here from Phoenix, Arizona for this moment. See, the Bible says that God has given unto you a mouth and wisdom. That death and life are in the power of the tongue. If just by opening up your mouth, you could go from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. By just opening up your mouth, you could go from being one of the enemy's children to all of a sudden becoming a son and a daughter of God. And sometimes your miracle is right here in the hole in your face. If this message is really speaking to you today and you're like, yeah, this is me, this is, this is what I'm dealing with, I want you to raise your hand today, not because we want to call you out, we're not going to call you to the front, make you, hand you a microphone and say, tell us, you know, what's going on in your family. We want you to raise your hand because the people around you, we're going to have them to cover you in prayer. We're going to have them to lift you up and, and to pray for freedom in your family. Go ahead, come on, listen to me. I understand the shame, but listen, nobody knows what's going on. The only thing we want to do is just be a support to you today. And I know I'm speaking to many more of you. And I know sometimes at that earlier service, like, man, I've been around the things of God for a little while. I don't want everybody in my business. I want everybody to know what's going on. Why? Because I'm polished. I'm a, I'm a believer. I've been saved 27 years. I got it all together. Sometimes that's our biggest problem. When we first came into the kingdom, we, were, we allowed ourselves to be impacted by the gospel. And then eventually sometimes we kind of polish ourselves and want everybody to be impressed by what we do instead of allowing God to make an impact upon our soul. All right? So today, listen, I want you to lift your hand today. If you need, if you need prayer in one of these areas, and if you see a hand around you in your area, I want you to stretch your hands in, the, in their direction. And I want you to lift them up. We're going to pray today. We're going to lift them up today. And we're praying for their breakthrough, for their deliverance, for their freedom today. Because it's needed. And listen to me, it doesn't always have to be something like, man, someone was molested in my family. It could just be, man, I'm, my, my, my children aren't living for God, and I wish I could talk to somebody about it, but I'm so embarrassed about it because I'm a volunteer at the church that I'm, I'm shouldering the load of this all by myself. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up those who have their hands up today. We pray for them. We pray, Father, that... The thing that the enemy has been able to do for years through silence. That God, you would give them the courage and the boldness to open up their mouth and to declare the wonderful works of God over their situation. The enemy would love them to feel like this can't turn around. This will never change. This will always be an issue in your family. But we are here today to declare the devil is a lie. Your word is true. Your spirit is here. And just like your spirit moved upon the face of the waters, I believe that right now in this moment, you are moving upon people's lives today. 
And God, as they open up their mouths and they decree, de de decree and declare the wonderful works of God, the promises of God over their situation, Lord, we thank you for freedom coming into their lives as they need it. Give them the courage they need to have the tough conversations. Show them, God, who they can talk to to help shoulder the load of what they're facing and what they're dealing with. We pray that right now shame is broken over their life and broken over their family. We pray right now that burdens are being removed and yokes are being destroyed. We pray, God, that right now they will begin to move. Some have been paralyzed by this situation, but we declare, God, they're getting their mobility back. They're going to begin to move like they used to move in times past. And we thank you, Lord, that they are free totally and completely from this and that this generational thing that's been going on is broken. We speak freedom, God, over the likes of their children. We declare that their children and their grandchildren will serve you all of their days. I don't care how far away from God they are right now. We declare in the name of Jesus that the eyes of their understanding are going to be enlightened and flooded with light. That they are going to come into the knowledge of the truth. That they are going to be revolutionized and changed. God, we thank you that they're going to run into other believers in grocery stores and shopping malls and on their jobs. And everywhere they go, there's going to be somebody there to minister the gospel to share the gospel one will plant one will water but you will give the increase we call them into the kingdom we call them into the kingdom we call them into the kingdom and not only will they be saved but they'll be on fire they'll be free they'll live God with boldness as they serve you for all of their days we give you praise and we give you glory for freedom in these area of their lives in Jesus name one last thing I want you to do before I turn this back over to Pastor Gregory one of the greatest things that you can do as a free person is to open up your mouth and say something that you weren't able to do before. So now I want you to praise God in the area that you've needed freedom in as one of that, a sign of faith that you believe when you got prayer, you receive freedom in that moment and he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on and give the Lord a shout in this place today. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on and give the Lord glory and honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let's just go ahead and lift up our hands one more time. Of course, we always give God all the glory for the message. But I just want to thank God for the messenger that he used today. Excellent. Excellent information. And so a lot of takeaways for me. And so when I think about the heart of the father, a verse comes up in my mind that uh, it's not his will that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance and receive everlasting life. And so if you're in here today, he sent his only begotten son. That's how much he loved you so that you would not perish, but that you would have Zoe. You would be able to live and experience life the way he intended for it to be. Not only can you do it successfully here on earth. You can do it throughout all of eternity. So I don't know your story, but a great gift you can do, give to yourself today is to receive God as your Abba Father today. And so if you're not saved, if you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to pray with and for you today. Secondarily, you might say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I got away from my father. And I see the results of getting away from him. I went back out there into the world. And, but man, that word was just for me today. It was exactly what I needed to hear. I'm putting down pride. And I'm acknowledging that I need help. And Father, I want to return to you today. I want to repent and get my life back right. And I want to come back home today and rededicate my life to you. If that's you today, I want to pray with and for you. Other thing that he talked about in that message that we all need each other. And so linked up church is about connection. It's about being a part of a family. It's about being a part of connect groups and on a dream team where people can pray for you and support you and be, for you, be there for you in difficult times uh, that you may be going through. So if you don't have a church home today and you believe God has led you here, he's confirmed in your spirit that this is where he wants you to join, then my wife and I, we promise to receive you and we will pray for you along with this staff 
staff every single day and every time you come in this building whether it's us staff member or we bring a guest in we'll make sure that you get the word of God and the word of God only so now while every head is bowed every eye is closed in prayer no one moving no one talking unless you've been assigned to do so I gave three invitations today. The first was to, to get saved. The first was to allow God to be your father, to receive his son as your personal Lord and Savior. The second one, you received him, but you got away. You left him. He never left you. And you're saying, I want to return back. Third one, I'm not a member of a church. Or I'm in between churches, but man, Spirit of God confirmed he wants me to join here today. Any one of those three invitations apply to you, would you do me one more favor? Would you just lift your hand straight up in the air right now? Lift it up so I'll know that I'm praying with and for you today. Anyone like that? Praise God, I see that hand up there. I see that hand over there. Anyone else? You're saying, Pastor, I want to receive salvation today. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. Pastor, I want to join this church. If you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart, I see you up there, my brother. If you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart, you still know you should have. God's just opening up a bigger door for you to show you that he loves you that much. So if you would, shoot that hand up in the air right now. Just go ahead and lift it up. Get in on this. Greatest gift you can give to yourself on this Father's Day is to become his son. I see that hand up there, and I see that hand right there. Praise God. Would you all do me one more favor if you lifted your hand first time, second time, or you still didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you still know you should have? Would you gather up all of your personal belongings, step into the nearest aisleway, come meet me right down here at the front. Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they come. Come on, you all can do better than that. Celebrate these good people. Praise God. Come on, Linked Up Church. Come on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Praise God. Is there anyone else coming? All right. Praise God. I want to say congratulations to each and every one of you. We believe you made one of the best decisions you could have ever made in your life. I'm going to take care of two of those invitations right here at the altar. That's salvation and rededication. For all else, we're going to take you to another room. They're going to show you more clearly from the word of God, specifically what you came down here for. If you're watching online right now, and this applies to you as well, I want you to lift your right hand towards heaven, and you can join right along with us in this prayer. And then we got some information to share with you as I conclude that prayer. So everyone in the room, lift your hand up towards heaven and repeat this prayer after me. And you can join in online as well if you want to give your life to Christ or rededicate your life. Repeat these words after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died, rose from the grave, and he is alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I've confessed with my mouth, what I believe in my heart, I am right now born again and in right standing with God. And all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Linked up church, celebrate them one more time. I felt that in my shana now that felt good praying for you all. Praise God. We're so excited for you. I want to challenge you today like anything else, right? A lot of people make decisions, but they don't make corresponding commitments. And so today is June the 18th, 2023. If you'll just give God the next year of your life, I promise you it'll be the best year of your life. What do I mean by that? Take the classes. That's our next steps process to become a member of Linked Up Church. They're going to tell you all about that. Get involved. Don't be a bench warmer. Right after you come out of those classes, get involved with connect groups. Get involved with our dream team, right? And you'll meet other people. And just watch. And I want you to look at your life one year from now and see if you even recognize yourself. I believe God is just that good. Come on, has God been that good to, to anyone else in this room? A lot of witnesses in here. All right, so if you all would look to uh, my left and your right, see that young man, go ahead and follow him right now. Give them another big round of applause. 
If you prayed that prayer online today, I want you to text linked up to the number that you see on your screen and someone on our ministry team will follow up with you accordingly. If you're in this room and you prayed that prayer right there standing at your seat, but you said, Pastor, I'm just, I just wasn't comfortable coming down in front of a crowd of people. Well, we've made provision for you. Right in the seat pocket in front of you, we have something called a connect card. And so every single week, people get saved, they rededicate their lives, they get filled with the Holy Spirit right there in their seats, okay? And so all you've got to do is take that card, fill it out in its entirety, and then check the box that applies to you, whether it's salvation, rededication, membership, baptism of the Holy Spirit, whichever box applies to you, check that box. And in a moment, I'll take up an offering. And then when the offering receptacle goes by, take that completed card, drop it in the offering receptacle, and we'll follow up with you accordingly. If you have not completed it by that time, it's okay. You can give it to any of the ushers, hostesses that are stationed around our worship center, or you can drop it in the offering receptacles as you exit the worship center. Now, you all can be seated, and while you're being seated, I am privileged to announce it is tithes and offering time. It is blessing time. Let me try that again. I think I, I came to the wrong church this morning. Let me try that again. I am privileged to announce it is tithes and offering time. There we go. It is blessing time. So, of course, you all know there are three ways you can give here at Linked Up Church. I'm setting up the text to give as we speak. If I can get past all of these Father's Day uh, messages, and you all know services going on. Stop sending all those messages while services are going on. All right, and so that pushed my, my give uh, button all the way down. And so whichever way, you can use text to give. That number is up there on your screen if you decide to do that. If not, you can go to our website and go to linkedupchurch.com forward slash give and then follow the prompts there. Or you can use the white offering envelope that's in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're using the white offering envelope, make sure that you fill that out in its entirety. And while you're deciding which way God is leading you to give today, I want to read from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And the context here is you can never disconnect your treasure from your heart. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, the Passion Translation says, Don't keep hoarding for yourselves heavenly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourselves that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Okay, and so pretty much all God is saying here, if you wanna know what someone values, follow where they put their resources here he's promising us that if we stockpile treasure in heaven how do you stockpile treasure in heaven we're the only two ways biblically first one is through tithes and offerings and then the second one is when we give to the poor right and when you give to the poor god calls that a personal loan to him and in proverbs he says i'll repay all of those loans and so this is a place how many know typically if men are involved in it on earth how many know it can potentially be stolen, right? Misuse and abuse. What God is saying is that'll never happen with anything that you invest in his kingdom, okay? And I trust that you all have done what you're going to do on today. And so let's lift our tithes, our offerings to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to join your faith with mine as we pray over our giving. Father, our treasure is in heaven, Father, because our heart is in heaven father and we know that when we store it up in heaven father we can call on it whenever we need it we can get a return on it whenever we need it father and it will meet and supply every need that we will ever have on this physical earth father and so out of our obedience and our good hearts and cheerful hearts towards you we know the end result father of our giving is that ministering angels will be released into our situation causing all of our needs to be supernaturally met we thank you and we we believe we receive every time we sow. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend, and following us on social media. 
Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see you next week. week.